If you want the Giants to beat the Eagles this Sunday, all you got to do is like this video. I'm not saying that it's a guarantee if you like the video, the Giants are going to beat the fraud Philadelphia Eagles, but I'm not not saying it. So don't be the guy or the girl that wakes up Monday morning if the Giants lose, and it's your fault because you didn't like the video. Don't let that happen. I'm going to assume every person that doesn't like this video is a fan of the Philadelphia Eagles. I'm super superstitious, not even a little superstitious, just very superstitious. So if you want to beat the Eagles, go down right now and like this video. What up, Giants fans? Welcome into Giants Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green. As always, in today's show, we're going to go through the latest injury report, and we have big news on Saquon Barkley. We'll talk about that. Then I'll give you a little bit of a preview of the Week 14 matchup, the NFC East rivalry, Giants-Eagles. We'll take a look for at some stats from the Eagles. We'll look at their top playmakers. We'll look at Jalen Hurts. Then I'll give you my five keys to victory if the Giants want to walk out of the game this Sunday, victorious. But before we get to Saquon Barkley, let's go to Xavier McKinney. Remember, McKinney broke his hand in that ATV accident during the bye week, had the pins removed out of his broken hand today, but it doesn't sound like it's going to be close for the Giants to have McKinney back on the football field. He can come back from injured reserve as early as this week, but Dan Duggan of The Athletic, the best on the beat, said Xavier McKinney had the pens removed from his hand yesterday, but Dable, Brian Dable, made it sound like he still has a ways to go. Dable said he genuinely doesn't know if McKinney will play again this year. This sucks. The Xavier McKinney situation is about as brutal as it gets. During a bye week, you are supposed to get healthier. And somehow, the Giants lost their captain on the defense and one of their best DBs on this football team during a bye week because he went on vacation on a guided sightseeing tour on an ATV, fell off, and broke his hand. It's in the past, so I don't want to work myself up and get too mad about it, but it's frustrating. This is a guy that was on his way to an, uh, uh, an all-pro season. Going to make the Pro Bowl. The dude was balling. He's a captain. The Giants defense, they miss him. You watch the games, and they mix Xavier McKinney so much. This situation absolutely sucks. It sucks, and it sucks to suck. What also sucks is Saquon Barkley was just added to the injury report Thursday afternoon. Not having Saquon Barkley would be an absolute killer. If Barkley is not going to be able to go this Sunday against the Philadelphia Eagles, we'll give you more info on him in a little bit. If he's not able to go, that is bad news for the big blue New York football Giants because the Eagles, they don't have a very good rush defense. They're rate right 17th in the National Football League, so you're able to run the football on them. And if with you're without, your best running back, your best player, your best playmaker, your really only big play threat on this offense besides Darius Slayton, the Giants could be in for a world of trouble come this Sunday. So let's do our part. Giants fans, Giants now. Viewers, the real ones, stand up. Let's get the good juju, the good mojo going right now. Type 26 Saquon Barkley's jersey number in the comments section. If you want Saquon to play this week, go ahead right now. Type 26 in the comments because we need our dog out there. Let's go through the rest of the injury report. These people did not practice on Wednesday, and these people did not practice on Thursday, which pretty much means they are not going to play this week, Josh Azudu dealing with that neck injury still. Dory Jackson, he was out at practice working with the trainers on the side but did not participate. Said he looked a little bit better according to the media. Dealing with that knee injury, still that sprained MCL that he suffered as the punt returner. I'll never get over that. Shane Lemieux dealing with that toe. I think he's cooked for the season. And Leonard Williams is dealing with a neck injury. Tuesday, Brian Dable said he was sore. He gave Giants fans hope. Not having Leo this week will hurt the New York football Giants. If you don't practice on Wednesday, you don't practice on Thursday, you're probably not playing on Sunday, and that's been the theme for the Giants this year. You watch the shows, all of you guys do, and you see the people that don't participate on Wednesday and don't participate on Friday, don't participate on Sunday. Is Leonard Williams a different guy and maybe he could do it? Absolutely. He's a vet in this league, and if there's anyone on the team that doesn't practice and could play, it is Leonard Williams. But, man, not having him out there would be huge. I just want to see... Leonard Williams, Dexter Lawrence, Aziz Ojolari, and Kayvon Thibodeau play a whole football game on the front four on the defensive line. 
Hasn't happened one time this season. That could be the best group in the NFL, and huh, we just keep getting teased and teased, and it actually does not happen. Here were some limited participants at practice on Thursday. Darnay Holmes still dealing with that shoulder. The Giants could really use him out there this week. I think we saw... Last week against Washington, how important he is to this defense without him playing. Richie James is dealing with the knee. Nick McLeod dealing with a little bit of a hammy. We could use him as well. We're already razor thin at corner with a Dory Jackson out. Henry Mondo is dealing with the knee. And Saquon Barkley is dealing with a neck injury. He was added to the practice injury report on Thursday. was not on it on Wednesday. So I'm kind of curious what happened to have an injury pop up in the middle of the week. Did he sleep on it wrong? Let's hope so. Let's hope that's the case. That would be the best case scenario. Look, I think he will play. If he doesn't play, it is going to be a long day for the New York football Giants. I do want to let you guys know here at Giants Now, hosted by yours truly, we are in a sub battle with our Philadelphia Eagles channel that is hosted by my guy, Chase Sr. He's one of my best friends. But this week at work, I walk in, and I can't do it right now, but I give him the double birds every single time I see him. Because I want to beat him in the football on the football field. I want to beat the Eagles. I want to hear him cry. But I also want to be, beat him in the subscriber battle. And he's beating us right now. We made up some ground. We're only down 14 subs right now. So if you love the Giants, you hate the Eagles, and you're looking for videos every single day on the Giants on this channel, lock us in, hit that big red button. F Philly, help us beat the Eagles in the sub battle this week. I want to tell you about today's sponsor, that being Fetch. Fetch is an awesome app where you get receipts, and then you just take a picture of them. And you can build up rewards points and turn those into gift cards. Go to chatsports.com slash fetch, get signed up with the promo code chat, and get an additional 5,000 free points. Use the Fetch app for iPhone or Android to scan your receipts to earn points and turn those gifts points into gift cards. Whether you're shopping at Target, Walmart, grocery shopping, or even your local mom and pop store, you can earn rewards by scanning your receipts with Fetch. It's super easy. The app is awesome. Everyone is going to be holiday shopping. Here's how the app works out. You get a receipt. You take a picture of it. Those are your points at the top. Once you get to 10,000 points, you can redeem those for a gift card to Amazon, to Starbucks, to CVS, Papa John's, if that's the type of pizza you, you like. I don't. Papa John sucks. I would never eat that trash. But you can get hooked up with chatsports.com slash fetch. It's an awesome app. I'm a guy that always said, nah, I don't need the receipt, homie. Throw it away because I'm just going to throw it away. But now I always say, give me those receipts so I can take a picture of it with my phone and I can start to rack up those points that I'm going to redeem for gift cards to use, like this Visa one, to buy holiday gifts for my mom, my dad, my brother, my sister, and my newborn nephew. Go to chatsports.com slash fetch. Get a free 5,000 bonus points halfway on your way to a free gift card. That's chatsports.com slash fetch. Let's get into the preview part of the show. Let's take a look at some Eagles offensive stats so far this year. There's a reason this team has only lost one football game, and it's because they're one of the best offenses in the National Football League. They average 28.2 points per game, which is the second most in the NFL. They have the, excuse me, the third most yards per game at 402. Their passing yards per game is 12th, and their rush game is 5th in the National Football League. They have a multitude of ways that they can beat you on the offensive end, and it all starts with their QB, Jalen Hurts, a guy that I'm not too high on, but you got to admit, the guy's having a hell of a season. 20 rushing, uh, 20 passing touchdowns, excuse me, just three interceptions, nine rushing touchdowns. Look, you're going to have to contain him in the run game, Make him make difficult throws. Get him under pressure. Get him to run out of the pocket and have to make plays off script. That's your best case and best chance for Jalen Hurts to mess up. He doesn't turn the football over a lot. Just three interceptions so far this year. He's a really accurate passer in the intermediate game, completing 68% of his passes. The Giants' best way for them to get under the skin and fluster Jalen Hurts is by getting pressure on him. Aziz Ojolari, Kayvon Thibodeau, Dexter Lawrence, you guys got to show up this Sunday. It's also going to be big on Fabian Morrow if he's out there at the number one corner or Nick McLeod or Cordell Flott or Darnay Holmes to slow down. It's really a two-headed monster between A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith, Quez Watkins. I just included him because you have to put three people on this graphic. You got to slow down A.J. Brown. You got to slow down Devontae Smith. 
A.J. Brown is so freaking good at football, and I hate that to hear that he's a Philadelphia Eagle because the guy is an absolute dog. We're going to have to do everything we can to slow him down because if not, he will torch this giant secondary, especially without a Dory Jackson. This could be a game where we look back and say, man, if we just could have been healthy and had a Dory Jackson out there, we would have fared much better. Devontae Smith, one of the best number two wide receivers in the NFL. He's a really good Robin to the A.J. Brown Batman. But it is, it's a fact. I hate the Philadelphia Eagles. I said on the last show I hate them more than the Cowboys, and I think I just feel that way because we play them this week. So join me in the comments section. Type F Philly. If you hate Philly, type F Philly. If you don't hate them, I'm going to assume that you're a fraud and probably an Eagles fan or you, you, you don't really bleed Giants blue and red like we do here, like the real ones do at Giants now. Type F Philly in the comments section if you hate the Eagles. I mean, they call themselves the city of freaking champions. And they've got two champions in, championships in that city since 2000. <clears throat> Bunch of frauds. They celebrate a broken bell. Type F Philly in the comments. The thing about Philly is they're not just an offensive team. They're also a defensive team and a damn good one. They have the number one ranked pass defense in the NFL, giving up less than 180 passing yards per game. If you're going to do some damage against this team, it's in the run game. They're the 17th ranked rush defense. You can run the ball on them. You don't want to fall behind because, look, they don't give up a lot of passing yards. And they get after the quarterback. They have the second most sacks in the NFL. They don't allow a lot of points. They don't allow a lot of yards. You're going to have to bring your A game. And if you fall behind, they're going to get very blitz happy and make Daniel Jones beat him from the pocket, which means these guys up front have to show up. Andrew Thomas, John Feliciano, Mark Lewinsky, Evan Neal. If Azuda does not go, I expect Nick Gates to be back at the left guard spot. These guys got to show up. Look. It's going to be tough, no doubt about it. But the Giants can beat the Eagles. They're not invincible. They're not this super team. They're not a team that just walks into every game and just mops the floor with their opponent. They struggled against the Colts. They struggled against the Cooper Rush-led Dallas Cowboys. They played with their food against the Jacksonville Jaguars. They almost lost to the Minnesota Vikings, who are a good team. They did lose to the Washington Commanders. You can beat this team. You just got to do the little things. Let's get to my five keys right now. Do the little things. Take care of the football. Be good on third down. Get off the field on third down. Don't hurt yourself with penalties. And this rolls in with key number two. Don't beat yourself. Don't turn the ball over on special teams. Eliminate the penalties on special teams. You're going to have to play your A game to beat the Eagles this week. Do the little things. Don't beat yourself. Keep it close because if you fall behind, we know the Giants are a second-half team. But you don't want to fall behind multiple scores against the Philadelphia Eagles. We just showed you. They don't give up a lot of passing yards, and they love to get after the quarterback. That's a recipe for getting up on teams big and not letting them come back. Keep it close. Don't beat yourself. Do the little things. Win the turnover battle. You, If you lose the turnover battle this week, you're going to lose the football game. If you play a clean game, you don't turn it over. You force them to turn it over one or two times. Pick off a Jalen Hurts. Maybe a special teams fumble. Maybe Miles Sanders fumbles. Then you have a chance. But at the end of the day, in an NFC East rivalry game, it comes down to this. Find a way. Be one play better. Be one point better. Be one yard better. And you can walk out of this game victorious and stamp yourself into the, into the playoffs. You win this week and you win one more game, the Giants are going to make the playoffs. Find a way to win. Daniel Jones, you want your first signature win as a New York Giant? Go beat the Eagles. Do it this week. And Giants fans, they will applaud you like you've never been applauded in your NFL and quarterback career. Find a way to win. Whatever it is, find a way to win. I'll ask you, though. Who do you got? Be honest with me. Don't lie to me. No capping. No BSing. No jabronis. Let me know. Who do you got? Type PHI for the Eagles. Type NYG for the Giants. I'm rolling with the G-Men because I ain't a phony. You know how we do it. Look, it's going to be tough. You're six and a half point underdogs. Is it impossible? Not a chance in hell. You can beat this team. They're not unbeatable. Do the little things. That's what it comes down to. Don't beat yourself. Make them beat you. No fumbles this week, DJ. No picks this week, DJ. Hold the ball high and tight, Tom Coughlin style, Saquon Barkley. What would you say? Richie James. Richie James. I don't even care if we put a punt returner back there. Let that piece roll. Don't turn it over. you got to do the little things this week. 
You made it this far in the video. Type real one. We'll see you tomorrow. Let's go Big Blue.